Hey everybody, Brian Foote here. Welcome back. I want to remind you to subscribe and to watch this channel for upcoming notification of classes I'll be holding on convexity and value investing. I have a 30-part series that I'm sharing with you uh, over the coming days. Um, question one was, what is value investing? Be sure to look at that video. Uh, here, we'll spend 90 seconds on question number two. How do you calculate the intrinsic value of a stock? This is a uh, age-old question, but it's rooted back in the work of uh, John Burr Williams and uh, later Ben Graham and others. Uh, Aswath de Motoran is another uh, modern professor of the discounted cash flow analysis. Uh, this estimates the net present value, the, the current value of all the future cash flows that a business will produce. It's uh, related to internal rate of return. It's related to, uh, to the total return uh, that one would expect a business to generate, right? So when you're evaluating any kind of an asset, uh, the, the, the value of that asset, be it a business, be it a gold mine, an oil well, or even a building, uh, is all tied to the future cash you'll get out of it. If you buy a painting, a painting has a uh, has a value that that you're paying but how do you calculate the 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 future value that you'll get that's that's tricky and that's subject to uh subjective factors right qualitative factors when you're looking at a building uh it's really very simple uh in in, in the sense that you know what uh, what kind of rents you'll be receiving you, you, you can kind of uh, easily calculate the expenses that will be tied to a building that you'll own over, say, 20 years. Uh, interest rates, you'll know. Uh, it's fairly easy to, uh, to calculate or to estimate the, uh, the, the service life of the different elements of a building. And there you can start to build a cash flow model of the revenues, the rent that will come in, less the expenses, the interest, the taxes that you'll pay, and the maintenance of the building. And that stream of cash flow uh, helps you determine over whatever period you want to own the building whether you're getting a bargain or not. Uh, businesses behave the same way. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated because a building uh, has uh, expenses that are fairly easy to calculate. Uh, to operate the building and rents that are fairly easy to estimate uh, based on inflation factors. But what if you're looking at a business that has uh, many different product lines, uh, a research and development budget that's uh, building uh, new assets for the company, uh, pe people within the company that are uh, building sales and marketing and ultimately a brand, right? Uh, ultimately, Coca-Cola, We'll use that as an example, which started out as a uh, as a, a syrup for uh, uh, for mixing into seltzer to make people's stomachs feel better. That ultimately became one of the greatest brands of all time, but uh, and certainly worth more than the building where the pharmacist mixed it up. But uh, it would have been easier to calculate the value of the building than the net present value of the brand that became Coca Cola. Or you know, obviously, I would much rather have owned. Apple stock when I saw the two Steves uh, putting stuff together than the garage where, uh, where, where they did it. So, but the intrinsic value of, of companies uh, can still be estimated and calculated and uh, the discounted cash flow model lends itself to that because you're looking at future growth, future revenues, uh, future expenses and modeling out what the future uh, um, you know, rate of discounting should be. This, this is not complicated, uh, but it's not easy. And it lends itself to a lot of uh, great uh, mental frameworks that we'll be talking about. So we're a little bit above uh, 90 seconds here, but uh, wanted to uh, talk to you about intrinsic value calculation. And we'll be spending a lot of time on that in the course. Looking forward to it.